So welcome students. In this video, let us look at the topic of conjugate of a complex numbers. So let us look at what a conjugate is and what the properties of the conjugate complex number are. So first, what is a conjugate of a complex number? So if z is equal to x plus i y is a complex number, if z is a complex number, then the conjugate of z, conjugate of the complex number z, which is denoted by z bar, a dash above z means z conjugate. The conjugate of z, which is denoted by z bar, is defined as x minus i y. So as simple as that. So if x plus i y is a complex number, then x minus i y is the conjugate of that complex number. The real part remains same. The sign of the imaginary part changes. The sign of the imaginary part changes. For example, so if z is equal to 2 minus 3i, then z bar will be equal to the real part remains same and the sign of imaginary part gets flipped. So plus 3. So if z is equal to i minus 4, so z bar is not equal to i plus 4. This is where you need to be careful. z bar is not defined as i minus 4. So z bar is minus 4. The real part remains same. The imaginary part is plus 1. So it becomes minus 1. So the conjugate of i minus 4 is minus 4 minus i. So if z is equal to root 3 plus 5i by 4, the conjugate of this complex number is root 3 minus 5i by 4. Just the sign of imaginary part changes. So this is what a conjugate is. Next, what are the properties of conjugate? So first property that you need to understand is z bar whole bar is again equal to z. So if you conjugate a complex number two times, that is, if you have x plus i y, you conjugate this, you get x minus i y. You conjugate this again, you get x plus i y back. So z bar whole bar is equal to z. Next, z1 plus r minus z2 whole bar can be written as z1 bar plus r minus z2 bar. That is, z bar can be distributed over addition and subtraction. z1, z2 whole bar is equal to z1 bar times z2 bar. That is, bar can be distributed over multiplication also. z1 by z2 whole bar can be written as z1 bar by z2 bar. So, bar can be distributed over division also. That means or all the four operations bar can be distributed. So next, if z is equal to z bar, then what does this imply? So if z is equal to z bar, that is x plus i y is same as x minus i y, when will this happen? So x and x gets cancelled. 2iy should be equal to 0. This implies y is equal to 0. So if z is equal to z bar, then y has to be equal to 0. That means the imaginary part of z has to be equal to 0. Imaginary part of z is equal to 0. And this works both ways. Not just in one way. Works both ways. Because if imaginary part of z is equal to 0, z will be same as z conjugate. Because the number is a purely real number. Hence, the conjugate does not change anything. And conversely, if z bar is equal to minus z, if z bar is equal to minus z, that is, x minus i y is equal to minus of x plus i y, that is, minus x minus i y. So this time, i y got cancelled. So 2x is equal to 0, this implies x is equal to 0. That means the real part will be equal to 0. So this implies real part of z is equal to 0. 
and this also works both ways. So if real part of z is equal to 0, that means if a number is purely imaginary, z bar will be equal to minus z. And if z is equal to z bar, then imaginary part of z is equal to 0 and the number becomes purely real. So the next property is z plus z bar gives you 2 times real part of z. Is this clear? z plus z bar if z is equal to x plus i y, z bar is x minus i y. So if you add these two, i y and minus i y gets cancelled. So you get 2x as the answer. That is 2 times real part of z. z plus z bar is equal to 2 times real part of z. Next, what is z minus z bar? So if you subtract one from the other, x plus i y minus of x minus i y, so x and x gets cancelled. So you get 2 i y as the answer. That is, i times imaginary part of z into 2. So 2 times i times imaginary part of z. So z plus z bar is 2 times real part of z. z minus z bar is 2 i times imaginary part of z. So this implies real part of z can be written as, in some problems, I'll write it as z plus z bar by 2. You should not have any problem with this. Because real part of z is z plus z bar by 2. And what is the imaginary part of z? It's nothing but z minus z bar by 2i. z minus z bar by 2i. So these are the two additional properties that you have. So next, what is z1 z2 bar plus z2 z1 bar? So what happens if you do this? So let us take a complex number z1 as x1 plus i y1. This is x2 plus i y2. So let us take z1 is equal to x1 plus i y1. z2 is equal to x2 plus i y2. So let us calculate this. So z1 plus z1 z2 bar x1 plus i y1 times x2 minus i y2. So this is equal to so first the real parts x1 x2 minus i square y1 y2 is plus y1 y2. So x1 x2 plus y1 y2 plus i times plus i times y1 x2 minus x1 y2. y1 x2 minus x1 y2. Now what is z2 z1 bar z2 is x2 plus i y2 and z1 bar is x1 minus i y1 is equal to so x1 x2 plus y1 y2 does not change x1 x2 plus y1 y2 does not change plus i times this time you have x1 y2 minus x2 y1 x1 y2 minus x2 y1 so now if you add these two these two elements are getting cancelled. So it is equal to 2 times x1, x2 plus y1, y2. So z1, z2 bar plus z2, z1 bar can be written as 2 times x1, x2 plus y1, y2. So how does this relate to general multiplication of z1, z2? So this does not relate to the multiplication of z1, z2. If you directly multiply z1, z2, x1, plus i y1 into x2 plus i y2. If you directly multiply this, you get x1 x2 minus y1 y2 plus i times x1 y2 plus x2 y1. So you won't get something like x1 x2 plus y1 y2. And do you see that x1 plus i y1 plus x2 plus i y2, z1 z2 bar and z2 z1 bar these two are conjugate to each other. So if you multiply these two, you are getting 2 times real part of z1, z2 bar. Or you can also write as 2 times real part of z1 bar, z2. So you can write 
x1 x2 plus y1 y2 as two real part of either z1 z2 bar or z1 bar z2 so z1 z2 bar plus z2 z1 bar which are conjugate to each other is equal to two times real part of either this or this so the next property is so if you have a polynomial function f of x with all real coefficients f of x is a polynomial function with real coefficients so if you have this function now if f of z is equal to z1 it means if you substitute some complex number in this function in the place of x assume that you got the answer as a complex number z1 so obviously for example so if you have a polynomial as 2x square minus 3x plus 5 if this is a polynomial with real coefficients so f of 2 plus 3i so if you put 2 plus 3i in the place of x so 2 times 2 plus 3i whole square minus 3 times 2 plus 3i plus 5 so you get some x and some i y right you get some complex number of the form x plus i y so if f of z is equal to some complex number z1 i'll write it x1 plus i y1 so this by implies f of z bar will be equal to z1 bar so if f of z is equal to z1 this by implies f of z bar is equal to z1 bar that is if you put f of if you put 2 plus 3i in the place of x you get the answer as x1 plus i by 1 this implies so if you put 2 minus 3i in the place of x you'll always get the number of the form x1 minus i by 1 you don't need to derive this if you know the answer for this the answer for this is directly x my x1 minus i by 1 so let us try to check whether this is holding or not so what is f of 2 plus 3i so 2 times 2 plus 3i whole square minus 3 times 2 plus 3i plus 5 let me calculate and show you from the next time you can directly apply this theorem that is equal to 2 times 2 plus 3i is a square plus b square plus 2ab 4 minus 9 is minus 5 plus 2ab is 12i minus 6 minus 9i plus 5 that is equal to minus 10 plus 5 minus 5 plus minus 6 is minus 11 and 24i minus 9i is plus 15 times i so if you put 2 plus 3i in the place of x you're getting minus 11 plus 15i as the answer now let us put 2 minus 3i as the answer 2 times 2 minus 3i whole square minus 3 times 2 minus 3i plus 5 is equal to so if you expand this you get 2 times a square plus b square minus 2ab so 4 minus 9 is minus 5 minus 12i minus 6 plus 9i plus 5 so that is equal to so minus 10 minus 6 minus 16 plus 5 is minus 11 this does not change minus 24i plus 9i that is minus 15i so can you see that these two are conjugate to each other yes so this happens always for every polynomial function with real coefficients so if f of z is equal to z1 then f of z bar is equal to z1 bar so these are the important properties of conjugates which you need to remember so once you understand all these properties you can move forward so let us look at some examples in the first question given that z1 is 9y square minus 4 minus 10ix and z2 is 8y square plus 20i it's given that z1 is equal to z2 bar we are asked to find x and y now z1 is equal to z2 bar that is these two are conjugates to one another that means the real parts of these two have to be exactly same 
and the imaginary part should be of exactly opposite signs right so if z1 is equal to z2 bar that implies 9y square minus 4 which is the real part of the first complex number should be exactly equal to 8y square and this end minus 10x should be exactly equal to minus 20 right this has to be the negative of this so this implies 8y square comes here so y square is equal to 4 and x is equal to this implies x is equal to 2 and y is equal to either plus 2 or minus 2. So these are the required answers. There are two answers for this. That is x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2 is okay. x is equal to 2 and y is equal to minus 2 is also okay. So there are two options for the values of x and y. Next, let us go to this question. In this question you are given that 1 plus i times z is equal to 1 minus i times z bar. So what is the complex number z? So how do I solve this? So let us take z as a complex number x plus i y because I don't know what z is. Let me assume that z is equal to x plus i y. So now according to the given equation 1 plus i times x plus i y is equal to 1 minus i times x minus i y that is z bar. So this implies, so let us expand this. So x minus y, that is the real part, plus i times x plus y, that is the imaginary part is equal to. So here, the real part is x minus y. So you know how to multiply the complex numbers, plus i times minus x minus y minus x minus y. So now these two are equal. Hence, the real part should be same as real parts. The imaginary part should be same as imaginary parts. Right? So x minus y should be same as x minus y, which is always true. And x plus y should be same as minus x minus y. So x minus y is, e is equal to x minus y is always valid. And 2 times x plus y is equal to 0. That means x is equal to minus y. So as long as x plus y is equal to 0, every complex number will satisfy this equation. So there is no single answer to this question. So the answer to this question is z should be of the form t minus ti, where t is any real number. So t can be any real number as long as z is of this form, 1 plus i into z will always be equal to 1 minus i times z bar. Thank you.